One. Hello and welcome to Live Coding Happy Hour. On this last Friday, we're going to do the show of the year. Um, I think it's December 18th, but who knows? It could be any day. It still is. Oh, nice. <laughs> I'm your host, Andrew Barnes, here with our uh, cast of characters, uh, some carryovers from last week. Um, Chuck, why don't you start with the introductions? I'm glad you said carryovers instead of leftovers. That way it sounded like we were leftovers. Leftover jumped in my brain first, and I was like, that doesn't sound nice. <laughs> Hey, my name is Chuck Tomasi, Senior Developer Advocate at Service, now been on the platform for a little over 12 years, doing all kinds of implementations, custom applications, and integrations. I've been with ServiceNow since mid-2010, and very happy that everybody is here today. Awesome. Thanks, Chuck. And our guest from last week back here again. <laughs> yeah, can't get rid of me. Uh, my name is Goran Lanquist, Senior Developer here at ServiceNow, been around for about five, six years, I guess. Being a customer, being a partner, now I'm working here at the mothership, trying to have as much fun as possible. Nice. That's me. And I'm Andrew Barnes, developer advocate here in ServiceNow. I've uh, been doing this for a couple of years and I've been in the uh, ecosystem for uh, a little over six years now as uh, a repeat customer and uh, uh, implementation uh, partner. And now here at the mothership, trying, like you said, to have as much fun as I can. And well, it's Friday. We got our Santa hats on. Uh, mine's struggling to fit over my headphones because my, my earbuds uh, were struggling. And we are here to do some live coding, but it's also Friday and it's a happy hour. So <laughs> let's introduce the beverages. Well, I was down to one beer in the household. And since we've already seen that one about five or six times in the last couple of shows, <laughs> I decided to change things up and have myself a Christmas margarita. <laughs> nice, a Christmas margarita. I love it. Nice. <laughs> All right, uh, Mr. Sexy Sweater, what do you got? Yeah, that's the perfect. You can see only that text. So I am going to continue with the Czech Republic, I guess. Uh, Slatu Pramen, which is a really nice lager beer. Been there before, can't stop drinking it, I guess. Good. All right. And what did I grab out of the, I didn't even look. I just was like, grab beer. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm behind the, uh, Oh, a Smithwick's nice. Oh, I got nice. a Smithwick's, uh, red ale. Uh, so this should be good. Mm, a nice Jolly Irish red. Um, so we've got our people, we've got our beers now we need to know what we're working on and so uh, a carryover from last week we started and got halfway through the show doing a linkedin integration and we realized that our auth that we were using uh, wasn't appropriate for the api endpoints so linkedin has got a couple of different auth methods and <coughs> excuse me and that wasn't uh wasn't the right one uh for what we needed so today our awesome guest, Goran, is going to, uh, he he worked on it over the weekend, 
Yeah. Um, and, and I worked on it a little bit on Monday, uh, but then he said he fixed it. And I was like, sweet, let's, <laughs> let's show it. Um, so we're going to walk through that uh, today uh, and get that running. So how did you want to do that, sir? Did you want to uh, start fresh in one of my instances with my credentials or how were, how did you want to approach this today? We should have probably asked that question before the show, but I didn't have time. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> so like my shirt, we're yeah, just going to, we're just going to roll with it. We're going to yeah. do it in production. We're just going to, we're just going to do it live, do it live. <laughs> Uh, I guess it will be easier if I do it because I need to log in with my credentials to be able to delegate so I can post on my behalf. Otherwise, you need to log in and do it. I don't know. We can do it that way. Um, uh, whichever way is easiest for you yeah, to, to I get guess going. I, let's do it that way. Because yeah, that's, do it that's that. how I'm feeling on my position on things it is functional then, and easy right now. Simple. Let's do yeah. it. Simple. And we know it works, hopefully. <laughs> so, so, so let's go through that. Um, so if you're not familiar, um, I, I jumped the gun a little bit. Um, we do live coding here. It's not, it's not scripted. We haven't prepared this. Um, we are using a different auth source this time. Um, and so things should work uh, and we should get to where we were last time, but then actually be able to use the API and move forward from that. Makes sense. Exactly. Yeah. All right, and I put the uh, I put the previous show in the in the description, so you can get to that nice and easy. It was just last week's, but I went ahead and put that link in there for you. Uh, so if you're watching this in the future, you can go watch the previous episode if you'd like to see us fumble around and and not be successful. Hopefully today we get a little closer to success. Uh, so victory is uh, connecting to their API, not getting rejected. And then uh, I think uh, we're calling it, so are we gonna do a retrieval as success or post as success? I think it will be post because we can try post first because that I know how- Because I really want it. retrieval because that's what I want is retrieval. Uh, yeah, we can go for retrieval if we want as well. So 80% so <laughs> victory is post and 100% is retrieval. A stretch goal. Yeah. A stretch goal. All right, let's do it. And you can start your screen share anytime you're ready, sir. And yeah, we will let's... we will get rolling. So, so it's good. There we go. Perfect. Yeah. So yeah. basically, yeah. just to yeah. show yeah. show what we are doing, I'm just going to move over some some videos so I at least see you. Uh, <clears throat> so first of all, LinkedIn is kind of difficult in my eyes because. To be able to use, let's do like this, LinkedIn API. So we have the developer site. Okay. And we go to the docs just to show you. And let's see, we have authentication. So earlier we took a look and a glance at this one, right? And tested it. And then we went over to the three-legged. Uh, this one seems that if you want to do other things that like posting for a specific person. Uh, so what we're doing today is doing the, the three legger version, which is basically like you do when you have your phone, you try your app for the first time and you ask for that app to post stuff on your behalf. So that's basically what we are going to do here as well. Uh, but to be able to do that, you need to have an application with a client ID and client secret. And to be able to have that, you need to have a page on your LinkedIn account. So I, I just created a, a company here uh, to be able to do that. So you need to have that first, otherwise you get stuck directly. Yep, and when I went through that same process when I was setting up my authentication is I had to create a a page and get all in Ex the app and okay exactly and, and just to show you around you have the app uh, on authentication you have your client id in secret you edit and put in your url for your instance mm -hmm. and then you need and that's a have... really important step in a, a bunch of these oauth type situations is you have to let your app know which things are authorized um, to uh, redirect to after the authentication happens. 
Um, so yeah. that's that's a super important step to uh, to set up. And then the only two two things I could actually get, you can see the different things I can delegate. And actually, it doesn't say retrieve. So that would be interesting to see if we can do that. We have create, modify, and delete post. But to modify, I guess we need to retrieve it. So that will be fun. Um, but be able to get these, you actually need to go into products and apply for having these two. You need a sign in product to be able to, to do the authentication. And you need to have the share product to be able to uh, post stuff. Uh, okay. And basically, you just click on those two, and it took me a couple of hours, and then it was added. So nice. that one works. So that is what you need to set up in LinkedIn to be able to get that to work. Uh, whoops. Oh, how do you do that on Mac to, isn't that, how do you zoom out again if you accidentally click? Um, Did you do a command mi a plus yeah. or command minus? Uh, no, I don't think. One There's, handicaps. You do a pinch zoom kind of thing. Yeah, you pinch yeah. zoom. Do you have a trackpad? No, I have the mouse. Oh, uh, then uh, command and scroll bar is probably like the scroll wheel. There, there you go. go. You got uh, it. Some single double click or something. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm never going to learn Mac anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, once I got a hold of a few gestures, I am never going back to like a standard mouse or anything else. <laughs> Like I'm addicted to trackpads now. Yeah. Oh. So, so basically, first thing we need to do is set up the OAP uh, registry. Uh, here we go. And I think I have the LinkedIn here. And I'll switch over to the right scope. So I basically put in the client ID in secret put in the grant type since it's an alteration in code mm -hmm. and all this stuff you get from the documentation here. Uh, you have the callback and then you have the link for authorization code. Mm -hmm. uh, so I filled in that one over here. And then let's see, then we have a couple of parameters. We have the client ID and all that cool stuff actually is fixed through the OAuth registry. Um, this one, I'm not really sure. It's not required so I didn't use it. I'm not, I'm not sure what the, the cross-site reference, what that actually does, but I guess in a production environment, you should have this as well. I don't know if you guys know more about that than hmm. I do. Um, it says required, no. <laughs> exactly. It's used to, to prevent this uh, cross-site. Yeah, uh, no it's, it's so that your token doesn't get passed to another site. And they can reuse my token. Ah, okay. So it, you're locked into that, the one that you set as yeah. uh, the, in that app profile, when we set the, yeah. the, the authenticated, uh, the redirect, uh, yeah. the approved redirect sources, that will lock that in to say, you know, that site can't direct you to another one with, you know, and say, this is that user. Ah, okay. That's cool. And then we, ha we have the scope, which is also required, where we basically need to have uh, something like this. Telling pretty much, I guess, which scopes we want to get delegated to us. So I basically went in and that kind of twisted me. I don't know if I did it the right way. So this would be fun to see if you guys, if I did it correctly. But basically, I went into these entity scopes Mm -hmm. And yeah. I created a name scope and I just pasted in the OAT scope, uh, just like it said there. That's the place. And then oh. I went to with the uh, OFA. Wait, um, hold on, hold on, hold on. It, it, was that the name? Was it the name scope? Because I, I see space, yeah. there's percent 20s. What did LinkedIn say about that? It pretty much says the parameter is scope. And okay. then. Oh, okay. Scope equals do, 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 do. So I thought that they, the they want it that way. Yeah. Ooh, okay. From the other page, it looked completely different, but all right. Okay. Uh, then I went into the profile mm -hmm. and just added uh, that one I created over here. Yeah. Can you drill into that scope record? I said the one, so it should show us. Yeah. So yeah, this does look correct. Is the, the name... Uh, 
yeah. the name is for you and the OAuth scope is what um, you know, they look at. LinkedIn actually we, cares about. So we, we're pretty much saying that we're trying to get the token. These are the things that we actually want to get and the, the different things they want to delegate to us on behalf of that user we're logging into, right? Yep. So we basically yeah, did and, that. And so those are really important when you're setting up one of these OAuths. Um, so those scopes are, are very important to um, because your app is granted certain permissions. And, but that doesn't mean that the asker gets all of those. So they have to ask for permissions as well. And they exactly. have to align the things that you offer and the things they request. They can't request things that you don't offer. Um, uh, but they do have to tell the user which things they're requesting. Um, and so that usually pops up on a presentation screen when the user is authenticating. So if you're if you're asking a user for their ability, you know, grant me some permissions. So you've probably seen this on your phone. Like some apps will say, I'm I need access to your phone, uh, to your camera and your microphone. Um, and so it presents all of those up front, and that's what those scopes are, is yeah. the different permissions that you're granting this app for that user. Exactly. I like that. Um, so basically, the next step is create, create the credentials and credentials alias. So I went in and created a LinkedIn, uh, and nothing special about this one. Uh, for the connection, I just used the, the URL for API. And then when I went in and basically you create my, oh, you, it's a pop-up. Uh, so you create a, a new OAuth. Oh, this is sucks when you can't see that one. Um, I have I have a philosophical question here. Yeah. Your, your connection URL has the API version in it versus V2. Is that the traditional yeah. place you put it or, or do you, put it in the spoke the, the and point itself. Because I'm trying to figure out when, yeah. when the API yeah. changes, usually parameters change too. So I mean, yeah. the, I'm, I'm struggling with this myself. I don't have an answer for it, but I'm curious to hear what other people's thoughts yeah. are. Where do you put that version? Yeah, yeah so for I, me, the, the version would go down into the individual yeah. uh, things. So the actions? in actions is where I would put versions. Some people because put my it credentials, in, um, my yeah. my connection and credential, isn't going to change, and so I, when they move between, so I don't want to have to establish a different connection alias for a different version if I don't have to, and I wouldn't have to if I abstract that down to the action level. Right, but it means a little more work, and now your actions, you can have versioned actions. You could say I can have versioned actions. Do, yes. Yeah. Okay. That that seems to make sense. I, I read somewhere, <laughs> at least, that sometimes you put it as a connection attribute because then you can actually change it here and your action will switch over to whichever value you have here as well. Um, and that makes sense for a, a stable API that right. you, could, you could then change that attribute. Yeah. Um, but a lot of times you'll see the API go from, hey, we're but using the API, parameters yeah. in version two. Now we're using query parameters in version <laughs> right. three. Like, there, not gonna you need to action. go revisit all your stuff yeah. and make new ones. Yeah. So <clears throat> Todoist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, big version changes from APIs uh, tend to require re rewrites and, yeah. and therefore... Um, so the more enterprisey it is, the more likely you're able to get away with putting it as an attribute or just putting it directly on the um, at the connection. But the, yeah. uh, you know, the more commercial <laughs> it is, the the more likely you're going to have to do a, a full rewrite. And yeah. So, so it, it's all over the map. Yeah. So now one thing um, maybe you can, uh, so I'm not sure that this two legged off is going to do what I need, which is, I think we needed, yeah, so I, I don't, I'm, exactly. I don't think you can do what you want. With I don't think I'm going to be able to do what I want with the user 
type three-legged auth. I need the app three-legged auth. Exactly. And for that one, as I understand it, you need LinkedIn developer enterprise to be able to, yeah. to get those. And I don't have that. Okay. So I think that was the limitation I was running into is the yeah. thing I really want is three-legged auth, but for the app, not a user. Because what you're doing yeah. is you're setting up your app to be a, authenticated as a user. Exactly. And, because the next, the and next then you step. only get the user level permissions. And yeah. I, I need, I don't think that will grant me the REST APIs I want to access to. No, probably not. And okay. Because the next step, when you click here, uh, and as you can see, I, I removed the token earlier because I mm -hmm. had the token just to show you. But the first time you will get this one. So if you open the record, and when you when I click here, get OAuth, I actually get that um, that login window that you get on your mobile phones. Right. Uh, so yeah. you're going to get prompted as the end user for the scopes that this app is asking you to authorize. Exactly. And it looks like this just to share that little screen. So this is basically what what's kind of strange is that it doesn't actually. Uh, if I start typing here. Oh, I might hit, uh, let's see if that was the correct password. <laughs> uh, I don't think it says what. Oh, it LinkedIn doesn't present to you which- uh, Scopes. Which scopes? Cause yeah, that's, exactly. With that that's not allow or deny screen. <laughs> <laughs> so basically it's done, whoops. Oh, and then it's done. Yeah, yep, it's done. Yeah. Yay. Let me go back to my share. <laughs> and then I got the token. So now if I go to token, it's there. But I don't get that normal thing like you get on your phone. These oh, apps yeah. like they, did, they didn't present the scopes to you. Yeah. No. Well, that's not. <laughs> feels um, a little feels a little sneaky to me. That's a yeah. little hinky. That, yeah. <laughs> that that's not the normal OAuth process because um, it should really should be asking that user what did I what am I about to authorize by doing this exactly and most users won't know what W underscore something something means anyway <laughs> usually they have it in full English yeah yeah, they, yeah but I mean it could kind of give us like this or what it's saying like this one that is normally what you're seeing right. Uh, but anyway, yeah. At least All right. We have so that. we have a token now, um, and we got to this part. Um, and if you don't know what uh, Goron just did, um, that was the plugin, uh, the SN Utils plugin by our our <laughs> good friend of the program and coworker yeah. at ServiceNow, uh, Arnaud, uh, yeah. has been working on that for over four yeah. years now. That's uh, crazy. What? Yeah. This, uh, and it has uh, slash commands. And so you've got the uh, slash FD to launch Flow Designer. Exactly, there's so many. There's so many cool there's, stuff I haven't learned. There's so many cool ones, but yeah. I think my most used one is pop. pop? To pop in and out. Oh, to so take what, that oh. current window? Like you can take Yeah, that so when you launch form? into, you know, when you like middle click and it opens a new tab and then it, yeah. but you're only in the record or list view and you want the nav back, you can use pop to pop you in or out of the, that, huh. the nav shell. I, I have no clue about that one. <laughs> it's so, nice. so very handy uh, when yeah. you end up, like someone sends you a link and you're, and it, it takes you directly to a record and to, instead of the nav shell. And you can be like, slash pop, poof, I've got the nav shell now. Yay. Hmm. Wait, if you didn't have the nav shell, where would you where do slash pop? Yeah. Oh, you, you just type slash pop anywhere. Like as long as you're not on an input, you just do slash pop. Okay. So it doesn't just, have, it's not in the filter nav. It's he just, wants to try it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's got to see it. Do I'm it. There he is too. Like if there's no nav two dot do, so I just hit slash pop now. Click outside of the input. So you're in the input oh, in of the name. Input. Yeah, there you yeah, go. There you go. Now slash pop. Ah. <laughs> 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 oh, 
Nice. No, that's that's definitely. <laughs> we can shut this down. Who cares about LinkedIn? We We're just gonna this? have a session on SN Utils now. <laughs> I mean, yeah. that that would be a magical session. Like SN Utils oh, is pretty great. We did yeah. one at a recent dev meetup, but there was just so much. I mean, I, 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 99% of it bounced off of me because I need like one or two things at a time and then come yeah. back in a month and tell me right. two more things. <laughs> so that was one thing. Let's do one yeah. more thing in S and utils because I'm having fun being distracted. Uh, so open it up, uh, open up the little uh, S and utils, not the slash commands. Okay. We've shown this slash one? commands now. Yeah. Go to tables because this is one of my most used things is searching for a table. So like, right. well, okay. So I love using this and then I can open the filtered view from here, uh, which is nice because this opens up just the filtered view. Yeah. So I love that feature is it finds the tables wow. for me and launches them with the interactive filter only, um, which is especially handy when I'm going to an obscure system table. So finding the name of the table, launching it wow. and loading the interactive filter so it loads fast because it doesn't have to load all the rows, which I don't care about yet because yeah. I haven't put a filter in. Like that's that's the gold is pop and, and the table jumper for me. Hmm. I like just since we're going for it, I like this one environment. So I can oh so, if I just, so that opens the same page in a different instance. In. Yeah, exactly. Oh man, that compare. one's so good. Yeah. There, there was a utility. Um, there's a different utility. I think it's the other competing one. So does our nodes like actually give you the diff? Well, I, I, I can't say no because there's so many things. I don't. I have no clue. So well, no. I'm <laughs> saying when you do the in the in environment to just it's open the same record on another instance it pops yeah, up in a so, new tab so the other plugin which i don't remember its name but the other like the second most popular plugin it will open the other record as a diff so it'll show you the difference okay. between this instance's version of that and the other instance's version and that oh, nice. that's pretty nice <laughs> Yeah. So when you're in okay. dev, you can say, how bad did I beat this up? It used to work. Exactly. <laughs> As you can say, how's this yeah. different than the prod version? And and actually see the diff right there for, you know. So it renders the regular ServiceNow diff compare. Um, oh, and okay. it's just a record from one instance to another. And it is super useful. Um, hmm. But I always forget to install that utility. Um, yeah. But but it's 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 there and it's really useful. I'm getting content ideas. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so we've got our OAuth token. So let us head into Flow Designer, which you have already launched in your second tab. Exactly. And basically just to show you what we are going for is the consumer, because that's where the stuff is that we are allowed to do. So basically we have, uh, where is it? Designing, we've done that, right? Um, and now we have, the share stuff where you can actually share things. And what we need here is as well, the ID. You remember we talked about the ID last time. We had mm -hmm. no clue what it really was. And it is actually a specific, it's not after URL. It might have been earlier, but they have changed that at least. Okay, because so, I, I think you did say that it was the one, the URL yeah, according last, to some, last time. Ex exactly, according to some homepages, it should be that one, but but they've adjusted it since then. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just looking at my actions. I have no clue what that one is. Uh, let's let's try this one just to, to see what I did. So basically it's just a normal rest of action. And I'm just using the connection alias and the resource patch is me. Uh, and basically we don't need to throw anything in there. Mm -hmm. So okay. if we test it. Sounds like a good simple test. Yeah. And we'll see what we get. Uh, response body. So here you can see we get my name, 
and somewhere here we got the ID. Okay. Uh, so this is the ID we need to use. And now we need to doing. use that. Okay. So basically, I guess we want to fetch that and um, do that as an output from this one. If we're going to make a flow later on or something. Uh, when I tested it, I just copied it just to be quick, <laughs> uh, just That's to show test. you. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, That's a nice for the test. post comment, and this URL is is really simple as well, where you basically have this resource path, and then in the body, you put the ID like this one, and then you can set up, and then depending on what you want to share. There are some good example here. Um, if we want to share content, the one I did, or if you have some media, media, and this is the one I stole, I think, just a text here, or if you want to have some kind of a URL uh, and so on as well. Wasn't there uh, like a two-part step? Create an image to share. First, you had to create the image, then you got an ID out of there, then you can make your share. Was that? Uh, kind of like a, uploading image. an attachment before you could attach it to a record like we have it, in service now. It does seem like yeah. that. Yes. This one seemed like a two-piece part, and it didn't used to be in the old version one API, and this one kind of bothered yeah. me. But this is even I, three steps, it seems like. Register, register upload, image. and create the share. Okay. So register, create the bucket, <laughs> put the thing in the bucket, and then consume and, the bucket. Then, wow. Yeah. Yeah, I remember looking at this about a year ago and just going, that seems really hokey, but there's got to be an yeah. architectural reason why they did it that way. Yeah, probably. But it doesn't have to be good. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Oh my God. <sighs> I've made I've made bad architectural decisions. In fact, I've made bad architectural decisions this week. <laughs> I think we can all say that at some point. The, um, if you upload something with a URL, you know how when you do it live interactive on the web, it will, yeah. if you say, hey, there's a YouTube URL, it will render the YouTube and make it clickable. So you have this you know, thumbnail yeah. below. Yeah. Does it do that through the API or have you tested that? I have mm -hmm. only tested to create a, a text here. We a can simple test. text? Okay. Yeah. But I mean, that's pretty much just this thing. So I can just type, and you can actually add um, hashtag and stuff like that. it will work. So if I just change this to like live code, happy hour post. I yeah, wonder put, our if, put our video URL in there. <laughs> yeah, put the video URL. Nice. Let's get that one. If Copy. this works, I am stealing your code. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And then I'll just do like that and we'll see. And trust me, January is going to be full of development for upcoming web series. So I'll do a test on this one as well. Let's see. And I think I should have a 201 or something. 201 would be an insert. Uh, yeah. 201. All right. Nice. So, so let's. And. I think you're going to save me about a week's worth of work here, buddy. There we go. You see all activity. But yeah, the, it was there. The oh, top I, one. No. It, it, didn't make, it didn't make the video like it did below uh, for Andrew. No. Darn. Huh. That's, that's really disappointing. I, yeah, that's an. Yeah, icon. but I know why, I guess, because if we want to share that, we should use this one create oh. a URL share. Oh, URL. Okay. So let's let's just because they've got a unique one. a new action new action time. Mm, yeah, let's... because um, that makes sense given what I know from uh, what I have to do on the blog to make it so that those types of things render appropriately in other places. So it makes sense that it it okay. prompts you um, because the user gets prompted by rendering it and then you can adjust it. An API doesn't get, doesn't get that choice. So it's saying, tell me exactly what you want there. Yeah. But it seems so, like when you're doing it interactively, it's doing some introspection to go, oh, I see URL, let's go render it. It does, but it allows you to adjust that. 
oh, you're right. There are some tweaks you can do. That's after. that's what I'm, that was my point okay. was that okay. the, the user interaction actually, they go and retrieve that and present it to the user and then the lets the user adjust it. Gotcha. And, and the, the API doesn't, doesn't have that interaction. So you have to, you have to tell it explicitly. So it, it, it seems like it, all of them are going to the same endpoint. Endpoint, right? yeah. Oh, okay. It's just a different, it's a different, uh, body. Yeah. different body format. Yeah. So to add some, some extra context. There we go. Uh, and I checked and I could not find an open API spec either. That's not hmm. surprising given the rest of the... <laughs> Bitly has one. Come on, Bitly has one. Granted, uh, it was in I'm not saying that LinkedIn shouldn't have one. I'm saying just looking at their dev site for LinkedIn. Okay. I am not surprised. Actually, Bitly's was in JSON, and I was able to find a service on the web that converted it to Mark or, uh, YAML, which was very <laughs> nice. Okay, so now we need so, to steal my ID. I guess. Steal, yeah, get the ID in there. So we got the ID. Well, yeah, Probably. we're going to parameterize that at some point. <laughs> yeah. Soon. Uh, yeah. Uh, or... Coding. Coding. Uh, oh. yep. Live live coding happy hour. Share article and we... Media. Ready. Description. Text. I guess we do something. wonder what that text is compared can, to this one um yeah like so this is the media text, text. yeah so it, goes, the, it would go below like in the it would go below so there's the image and then the text for that that media i was stealing what the youtube is sure sure um and then that seems you're, reasonable you're and then, and then there's a title text another text <laughs> that's right yeah. Let, let's there's the Earl. All right. should, should we do? I'll just change. Yeah, just read. Yeah, just to do like, like a, a V2. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see where that pops up compared with the other I think the one text, I, I just trim the, that to be live coding happy hour and, and nothing else. Like that. And then we can decide, I guess public or something visibility sure connections or public uh public would be good uh, so let's see i've never noticed that on the uh ui that you can change that yeah it's a it's a little drop down at the top yeah so i guess we're ready i to always go. i always you know leave it as it, as yeah. the default which is public but and it's funny Oops. which things in UIs you don't notice that you don't use. Mm -hmm. yeah. Until somebody points them out and then you go, oh, yeah. that's a time saver. Yeah, we got the 201 again. We're such creatures of habit. And I'm ready. I'm ready. Oh, there we go. So we have, okay. So the one with the hole, the LinkedIn integration text, it doesn't pop up anywhere, right? Oh, you're right. So it only Where did has. Oh, what was the point of that? To... Yeah. <laughs> Putting in parameters that don't that it doesn't consume. So we have no clue if it's this text or this text, though. Well, one of them, I think one of them is in the media, but the text that says LinkedIn yeah. integration, because the one in the bottom of the video yeah. also said, I'm, I'm convinced it's using two of those three. One in the one in the message, one Is down there. The correct... Yes. No, because it should have that one, right? So that is the one. I would hope that this would... is from YouTube. That came from YouTube, so it must be reaching out to this... YouTube. It must have an implicit no. API call. That one was. Uh, this is Andrews. Right, right. And mine yourself says like or happy. Yeah. And Andrews was done via the human method. Yeah. So I guess we this one. We can explain. This one is probably that one. So this one should be right. called LinkedIn Live Coding Happy Hour because this is what you see here. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. And right. then this text here. 
is basically the text above, right? Let's make sure that's clickable. Part. Does it does it click and go through where you expect it? <laughs> yeah. So oh, nice. Just have to check. Awesome. I'm convinced. <laughs> yeah. You just saved me a whole bunch of time in January. Thank you. I thank love. You. I love. Uh, past me saving future me time. <laughs> I know I'm going to be watching this video. Again. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. That that is. Uh, so I was talking to Josh yesterday. Uh, Josh Nerius used uh, started this uh, show um, with Dave Slusher. Uh, what four, four June, years? No, 2016. Yeah, four years oh ago. God. More four and a half years ago. I forgot I was on episode yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long I time. Long months later, no. <laughs> um, and uh, I was talking to him, and he's like, "Yeah, I miss that. I can't go back and look at things like I used to be able to do because uh, <laughs> the number of times that we go look at our own videos is actually quite high." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's missing that in yeah. his new role yeah. um, owning integration hub because he doesn't have <laughs> recordings of the summary of what he learned this week and at the end of the week oh yeah it's Which really good to go fun. back to your stuff well you know because i don't store uh, all of this right i store that i know that i have done this and yep. uh how to find it you do your best yeah. at how to find it yeah <laughs> Try to remember. Is it a so blog? I, Is it a video? Did I write it in Evernote? Yeah. Is it a post? -it? I don't remember. <laughs> well, that is great. Uh, so we got a post, um, and I, this API is not going to be able to do the retrieval I want. So let's just take a moment um, and look at it. Um, can you go to the the auth types I on the LinkedIn page? The LinkedIn page. Yeah. So on the, the, uh, yeah. API references. No, the should be probably under development. Ah, I let's suspect. just do it like this. Let's go back to the start. Yeah. Development and then, authentication. Yes. This one. Yeah. So, scrolling down here. So we've I've set up my app and. Uh, I've got this part and this client secret and the getting the auth code. Um, so in just a little bit it further. Did, it didn't look this nice when I did it. <laughs> yeah, see, it's supposed to prompt you like that. Um, yeah. Well, you know, the screenshots on documentation is often <laughs> a <clears throat> service. So you'll see down here under this uh, application approved part, is um, when you connect with your, your auth. So this is the thing that I hadn't um, gotten finished was the, the transaction with them when we start it, they send you back a code that you need to include in the neck in the last leg. Um, and so that's a thing that I have to add uh, into in, in order to get the three-legged auth to work. Um, and that will require, so go over to uh, link, go over to your instance and go to the oh, uh, app registry and open this up. And so this will need to be done in a custom OAuth API script. Mm. So open up one of those and I'll show you what I need. So I know what I need to do to finish this for mine. Um, I just have to finish it. Um, and you're going to need to show us that, mm. uh, that window or pull it into this. Okay. So what do you get want that to Get that URL click on? and get the URL ah. from your pop out and throw it into... Uh, Sorry, I, I, I didn't uh, remember that you couldn't see what I was looking at. Yep. So let's just steal this one, I guess. Yeah, so drill into uh, really any of these will be fine, but the OAuth util is the, the base one. And so these are script includes um, that are for auth. And uh, it doesn't really think doesn't. like it. 
it doesn't think it's a real boy. Oh, let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Still doesn't want to load it though. Mm -hmm. Um, so just tri you know, just go to the script include table and open the OAuth util. It's fine. There we go. And scroll down to the, uh, well, actually we can do it right here. Um, well, no, scroll down to the script for me, would you? And make the script big. So do the, uh, oh, I, that it's one. that one, yeah. So what I have to do is um, I've got to throw in the, uh, intercept the request parameters and send it a couple of extra parameters. And then I have to uh, uh, post, so I have to add that to the pre-process uh, access token. So there'll be a little bit of adjustment that I'll have to do to do that three-legged off for my app for what I need. And this is this is where I adjust that, is, is here in this uh, OAuth handshake. Um, and so you can adjust, um, you know, so these are defaults that it sets up to handle, you know, generic OAuth, but if, uh, you know, a company has added some extra things, um, a good example would be uh, Google. Google adds uh, some extra things here. Um, so for example, if you're doing um, offline access, which you're doing an app, so the, you know, it's, mm. that's normal. So that's a scope that that YouTube requires and you request it, but in order to, to handle the response appropriately, you have to add in something here. So drop back into the list view and open up the YouTube one. And you'll see here, um, the access type offline in, in the request okay. parameter map. So this is this is something custom you have to do for YouTube um, as of this year. So it used to be only in the scope request, but now it's actually not only a scope request, it's also part of the request parameters. But uh, this is a little bit over my league to be honest, but a question here then, if I want to add the state, this one, is that, where I'm adding that one? Uh, yes. Yeah. So if if you need to add the state in as part of the OAuth handshake, that's yeah. how you add it. Because basically, I would like to do this to prevent that cross groups functionality. Yep. So then I actually need to go in and do. So you need to um, pretty much add copy, state here, and then well, so you copy the out of the you know the OAuth. Yeah. So there's the base one that it uses when yep. you don't select anything. You copy that one, customize it for yourself and select it yeah. in your app registry. Yeah, make sure um, that it will use that one. Yeah. Make sure that it extends the base one. Yep. Yeah. We had to do something so, similar in an early, early version of Live Coding Happy Hour with Dave and Josh when we did, I thought it was Google Calendar, but it could be something else. But I know I definitely stole it from my Google Calendar integration. Yeah, and so there's there's quite a number of things that you might have to do depending on the OAuth provider um, that they they require you to adjust um, in that uh, in both how you send them information and how you process their tokens, um, and and this is how you do it is is in this this script include so that's what that field for in the app registry is to select one of these that then, uh, you know, handles how ServiceNow asks uh, for that OAuth connection to that other entity. Yeah. Um, it, so awesome. It's, it's nice to see that the description field here is basically the code you need to paste in a new script include just to, yeah. to get and, started. And it's actually like useful example. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like the, those, those are, this is a, a good script include mm -hmm. description. <laughs> yeah. because it is a it's, it's an example and it's better than the base case one because the base case one doesn't <laughs> have a lot of stuff in it it's just empty yeah yeah so 
you might not know the format that it needs to, you know, like if it didn't have the pre-process access token in, uh, in the, in the script already, the yeah. example does. And, and now you know how to, to reference that and use it. To use it. Yeah. yeah. So this is, this is an example of a good script include description. Absolutely. To me. <laughs> Documentation right where I need it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't have to go to the ServiceNow API uh, docs page, uh, <laughs> which is great. Yeah. Um, so I think we're at a good uh, stopping point. Um, we, you know, we got our eighty percent victory. Yeah, that's good enough. That, which, which is good. So you can stop your screen share, sir, and we'll return yeah. to the regular video. View. Quick update from last week, because the last thing we did was make it a couple of made a table. Remember, we were we said well. Well, that didn't work, and we finished this piece real fast. What else we got to do? We had a few minutes to kill last week, and Andrew was making a table so we could generate uh, output content, whether it's HTML for a blog or Markdown for a blog or a social media post, based on the data that's on a record. And I was sitting around Sunday morning, <laughs> because that's what I do, and said, you know, I could make this pretty easily. There is a an API class in the global scope called record to HTML that will let you take a template line and use the dollar curly brace notation like you would see perhaps in an email template and parse those variables. And you can even dot walk into those variables. Say that again, Chuck. You can record to HTML, <laughs> go look it up and you can use dollar curly brace notation. So dollar curly brace short underscore description. So there's a platform feature already for that? Yeah platform feature already for that. What I added was I made a script include that said, just go generate me the metadata content for the template. So I made a second table called script, think mail scripts, where you use dollar curly brace. And in my case, it's script colon script name, and it will use GlideScope Evaluator to go run that script. And I pass it current. I, I may pass it other things in the future, but now we've got very similar notation to an email notification for any other output. You can use the meta, you can use the data from a record to generate HTML. Here's an HTML template based on a condition. When I'm in you know, work in progress, I want my HTML template to look like this. When I'm done post-production, I want it to look like this. You can use different templates, different and ultimately super flexible because those dollar curly brace substitutions I'll be happy to share that piece with anybody who wants it. It wasn't a whole lot of code. GlideScope Evaluator and Record to HTML are at the heart of all of that. So we'll probably cover that in, in an upcoming video at some point. I just wanted to let you know that we've moved that forward and that's going to be a key component to automating our process with this video series, with other video series, with podcasts that we do. So we can automate and say, it's time to send to LinkedIn. Boom. There goes the LinkedIn content using the URL from the YouTube field and using the description from the title field. And whatever we want to put into those templates gets shoved out to social media or blog or whatever. So big time savings in authoring and consistent content. I love cool. that there's already a utility to, to do that. Yeah, I didn't know about this until I went on a tirade through the API, <laughs> through the script includes. Because you were doing it What's yourself, this? like you I built was your own. By, yes, I was doing it by hand, and I had <laughs> it was per application per table. So and it didn't do dot walking, so it would know to look for that expression of dollar curly brace something mm -hmm. and go look for the field. But I had a limited list of fields, and anytime I wanted to, I had to update the code. It's like, oh, yeah. no. and I thought, you know, clearly that functionality exists for mail. But I thought that that was either black boxed or just specific to mail. I did too. And, well, you know, years <laughs> in, year, many years in, we've got on this show. <laughs> we don't know how long it's been there. I mean, it could have just been yeah. you know, 2008. <laughs> it's created um, 2008. <laughs> okay. It's been there a long time. So yeah. Yeah. And, and and this is why the ServiceNow platform is so powerful. Yeah, it's always <laughs> something to discover. So before you go and build something. years later, we discover a thing. <laughs> Do a little research before you go and build your own. Yeah, that is fantastic. Well, uh, that is a, a nice, uh, that's a nice button on that. Thank you, Chuck. Uh, and we will uh, do something around that uh, next year. That. 
that's a that is a, that's just a treasure. Um, so, how was your Christmas margarita? My Christmas margarita <laughs> is gone. Well, I still have some in the tank. <laughs> I, I uh, but it, I made it a little strong, so I'm not going to finish the whole thing. I'll be that for uh, karaoke later. La yeah, later. <laughs> and how was it? I, it was very good. I, you know, not my best margarita. I'll give it a four and a quarter. Four and a quarter. And how was your Czech beer, sir? Oh, my my Slatoprom. Oh, it's it's a five. It's really good, and it's wow. It, it's done as well. <laughs> And uh, my Smithwick's uh, red ale uh, is quite good. It, it's a 4.5 by alcohol and by me. <laughs> wow, good thing it wasn't like an eight and a half. <laughs> <laughs> then you have to divide by. Um, so that is uh, the end of our 2020 live coding happy hour. Um, uh, this has been a, a, a long year. I hope you have enjoyed hanging out with us as much as we hang, you know, enjoy hanging out with you here on the show. Um, this is my favorite way to go into Friday. I still have a little more work to do today, unfortunately, because the, the earlier hour to accommodate our fantastic <laughs> guests go on today. Um, but um, it's just my favorite favorite way and i hope you're getting some value out of these shows and if there's a way that we can uh you know improve these for next year feel free to reach out to me directly uh, and let me know what you think um, you can put comments on this video but feel free to email me or slack directly if you have a you know an idea for how we can do better in the coming year because you know we we always want to improve and get better um, cause nothing, nothing's finished, uh, as long as we're still working on it and we're still working on this every <laughs> week so we can grow and improve. Um, and, uh, we just, uh, really appreciate all of you and I hope you have a lovely holiday. Anything from, uh, you Chuck, before we say goodbye for the year. Just thank you to everybody who's been watching. It has been a real pleasure to be able to bring this content to you. Uh, it, without you, it wouldn't be much of a show. Th double thank you to all of the guests, including present company included. Goran, thank you. Uh, you. You bring subject matter and sub See if we can do this while we're sober. Subject, subject matter, matter expertise, knowledge to the the show that you know goes beyond what we have, and it just it adds so much color. And it's just I love learning from other people whether you know we're customers or employees or it's it's such a wonderful community and and this show really showcases a lot of that community so thank you to andrew and brad for keeping the system up and running and we'll continue to automate and participate and improve going forward but again like andrew said we we do invite your feedback please let us know what we can do in 2021 happy holidays everybody all right. Well, that was a lovely closing. Thanks, Chuck. And uh, top of the hour. And it is time to go. And we'll see you uh, live coding next year. So have a great holiday, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Stay Bye. Safe. See ya.